All right, all right. LDBC, LDBC or nothing. This is your boy, The Coach. You're live, live, live on The Coach Show, The Coach Show Live. Okay, folks. Um, I'm going to get my thoughts on this whole Marcellus Williams situation. I was asked, you know, could I please give my thoughts on what I think about this case? Okay, well, I'm going to say something. I'm going to look at this from all sides, okay? I'm going to look at this from all sides of the spectrum, and some of y'all might like it, and some of you do. Some of you might like it. Some of you might hate it. I don't know. But I'll tell you this, though, okay? There was no physical DNA evidence to link Marcellus Williams, okay, to this murder. Okay? There was no physical DNA evidence to link this man to this murder. Okay? They have anything. However, there was one thing. There was one thing that he had in his possession. Just one. I'm going to take a seat here, guys. I'm doing a cool down lap. There was one thing that this man had in his possession. And this man had a laptop, okay? That was sold to him by, I guess, people that stole the laptop from Miss Gale, okay? Stole that laptop. And possibly could be the people that probably took a life. I don't know, but Marcellus Williams made a very dumb, a very dumb, non-calculated decision that cost him his life. That laptop cost that man his life. It's just what it is. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. And I'm telling you this, Marcellus did something stupid because I did the exact same thing, okay? The name I'm gonna use in the video for the person that I'm talking about is Ralph, okay? Uh, to protect him and his family. Um, so Ralph was the dude on the block who always, 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 always had every single thing brand new, okay? Anything that came out brand new, Ralph had it. Um, the new pair of Jordans, you know, Ralph always had a new pair of Jordans. The day that, when the day the Jordans came out, the next day Ralph had them on his feet. Um, he was a shoe collector. He was an avid shoe collector. Ralph had a lot of money, okay? Had a lot of money. You know, Ralph was a weed boy. He sold weed, okay? Sold weed, and he would always say, man, I can show you how to get this stuff. I was so afraid of my father, though. I didn't, I didn't want the fact that my dad or my mom, you know, found out that I was, I was selling weed. Now, every now and then, every like maybe, maybe once or twice a month, I would do some drop-offs for Ralph. I would do that. But I couldn't get full-fledged into that lifestyle, man. I just, I, I wasn't about that. I'm going to tell you dudes that now. I wasn't about that. And I wasn't trying to have them kind of problems, man. Just what? Um, so we were talking to Ralph. And Ralph had on the Jordans. And we were like, man, them Jordans are nice, man. Like, how much you pay for them? He said, oh, I pay about 200 for these. I pay about 200 for these Jordans. And we were like, word? You paid about $200 for these Jordans, yeah. And guys, ain't that something, man? Jordans, back then, when I was 16, they cost $200 plus, and they still cost more than $200 today. Like, guys, it's just crazy that this shoe has managed <laughs> to be still high and still in high demand. Crazy. People would kill you over Jordans back then, and they'll kill you over uh, Jordans right now. People back then would kill you over a pair of Jordans, and they'll kill you now. Um, so Ralph had those Jordans, and everybody was like, yeah, man, them Jordans nice. Well, you know, after that day, we didn't see Ralph for two weeks, okay? We didn't see Ralph for two weeks. Two weeks later, we saw the neighborhood guy. Now, this neighborhood guy, he always had a shopping cart, and if you grew up in, in a hood, you always had that guy that would sell you stuff for pennies on the dollar. Like literally stuff that you be trying to get a hold of, you can't get it, or it's too expensive at a store, but he got it. Um, he would sell knockoff stuff. He would sell other items like, you know, like toothbrush, toothpaste, toilet paper. You know, he'd sell like mouthwash. He would sell like a lot of household stuff, cleaners that you would need that you just didn't feel like going to the store. You didn't feel like going to a convenience store. You didn't want to go to a grocery store, but you, this guy was out in the middle of the neighborhood and he was just selling this stuff. Um, you know, people would buy from him, but also people were very intimidated by him. He was a very intimidating person, very intimidating, just, you know, really cold and callous. And he was always about his money. I remember seeing him break a guy's hands. Seriously, did this happen? He broke a guy's hands because a guy tried to run off with a tube of toothpaste. He grabbed, ran up, caught the guy. And here, this dude, he probably could have been an NFL football player if he'd have really worked at it because he was very intimidating looking, very strong and intimidating. And he ran this guy down 
and nobody dared touch the stuff in his car. Nobody dared because you were looking at, you know, uh, getting buried. He broke this guy's hands. I'm talking about broke him, stepped on him until he broke all his fingers for, for, and took the toothpaste back. Took the tube of toothpaste back. <laughs> I, I, damn. I mean, he broke the man hand over two with two pace. So, you know, you were dealing with an unstable cookie, but the man had everything you needed. He was always hustling. You saw him every day with that car. Well, you know, sometimes he go periods where you didn't see him. But then, you know, you see him for a period of time where the guy just hustled, man. Man had a crazy, crazy hustle. Um, so one day, I saw him like two weeks later after we ain't seen Ralph anymore. Um, the guy had to pay a Jordan's. You know, he had a pair of joints, and I said, yo, so-and-so, uh, wait a minute, are, are those real? He goes, yeah, they real. I said, uh, how much you going to sell them for? He said, man, i sell them to you for $40. Okay, ding, ding, ding. That's the first mistake I made. A pair of joints for $40? Like, dumbass. You knew these joints were hot. I knew they were hot. I just didn't want to believe it, y'all. I, I, I just I just didn't want to believe that these, these Jordans were hot. I ain't want to believe that. Okay, I didn't want to believe they were hot. I just said, man, I'm, I'm look, I'm getting a good deal. I'm finna get a steal. Look, I, I'm getting these Jordans. Okay, I want them. I ain't think about it. And I said, hey, man, where you get these Jordans from? He said, oh, man, you know, my man's uh, owed me some money. And uh, the Jordans were too small for his son. So he just gave me the Jordans to sell a lot of debt. I said, oh, okay, bet, cool. Now, me being stupid, and I fell for that, okay? Of course, I was 16, I was young, I was dumb, I was stupid. So I fell for it, okay? Fell for it, you know, not knowing what was about to come. So I took, I took the shoes home. Shoes didn't have a box, okay? That was another red flag. But took the shoes home anyway. About to put the shoes on. Paid them, about to put the shoes on. I ain't even get the shoe, the first shoe on my foot. Didn't even get the damn shoe on my foot when the news popped up. A picture of Ralph showed up on the news. Okay, they had found Ralph in the creek. Now, if you know anything about my old neighborhood, the creek is where we used to go. We go there to drink. We go there to smoke. We go there sometimes. You know, we take a couple of females back there. It was a very wooded, dense area. And if you're in the creek, you would have to be deep inside the creek where it was for anybody to hear you. Like nobody could hear you when you were outside the wooded area. Can't can't nobody hear you in there. So they found Ralph in that creek. They found him. Uh, you know, and guess what? Guess what? When they found Ralph in that creek, of course, you guessed it. Ralph didn't have his shoes on. Okay, Ralph's parents said that his shoes are missing. You know, when they found the body, and, uh, you know, Ralph's parents had to go down and identify the body, they said his shoes are gone. Said that he had on, you know, had the, pair, the new pair of Jordans. Okay? So Ralph didn't have these shoes. And I looked at the shoes that I bought because I'm sitting here thinking, wait a minute, damn. Wait a minute, these look like Ralph's shoes. So I looked at the shoes, and on the side of the shoes, there was some mud on them. I said, what the hell? So immediately, I put two and two together. I said, man, this dude done somehow took Ralph's shoes and then sold them to me. And I was wondering, that's why the shoes he sold them so cheap. That's why, because he wanted to get rid of them fast. But you got to understand, just throwing away a big ticket item like that to somebody like him, he couldn't bear the thought of not having any money on it. I mean, seriously, that's that's how a lot of guys that sell stuff, they can't, they, they just, they can't throw them away. It's something inside them that will not let them throw anything valuable away. Because it's almost like they're throwing away something in the trash, and they scared that somebody else going to get them for free. Seriously. But when I saw the mud, the, the mud scuff on the shoes, I, I got rid of them. I ain't going to lie to y'all, I got rid of them shoes. Because I didn't want them shoes tied to me, and I didn't want the police thinking that I did something too, Ralph. Okay? Wasn't me. Well, then maybe a week later, they arrested dude, you know, that sold, that sold me the shoes. They arrested him. Um, they found blood on his shopping cart. And they found blood on a pair of his old clothes. Now, you would think, you know, why wouldn't he get rid of his clothes? Well, you know, he had on, like, very expensive clothes. Very expensive clothes. And, you know, the shirt that he had on, it cost a lot of money. So, in his mind, he ain't throwing that away. It's too expensive. See... A guy like that, they dangerous because they they care about valuables more than they do somebody else's life. He cared about the value of that shirt like more than he cared about his own freedom. He could not get rid of that shirt. And I mean, may, maybe y'all know people like that. The dude, the dude couldn't throw the shirt out. I said, damn. But it was blood on his shirt and blood on his cart. So pretty much that connected him to Ralph's murder. 
And that's what happened. You know, he got arrested. Um, he didn't even say who he sold the shoes to. And I'm thankful to this day, you know, dude, dude ain't say who he sold the shoes to. And the police, I guess they didn't really ask him what happened to the shoes. I guess they didn't really ask him what the shoe, because they got the person that they did the killing. So I guess they didn't really need to ask him what happened to them shoes. But guys, this is a cautionary tale. It's a cautionary tale for all of y'all because, you know, sometimes we got the family friend that'll try to sell us some stuff that, okay, we know probably, <laughs> we maybe we shouldn't buy it, but we know it's cheap. We know we ain't gotta go to the store. We know, like I'm talking about these big ticket items. I learned I will never ever, unless I know the person, like I really know this person, I'm never going to buy an expensive luxury item off anybody because many of these luxury items are connected to a crime. They ain't going to buy it. Not, not happening. And unfortunately for Marcellus Williams, that's what happened to him. He bought one of these luxury items, like a laptop that's a luxury item. He bought that and it was connected to a crime and that ultimately cost him his life. I'm going to read you guys a letter, okay? I'm going to read y'all a, a letter, okay? from the, um, the, the, the religious community, they tried to save his life, okay? Here, let's go ahead and get this letter going and I'm gonna read this to y'all, okay? And it says this, Dear Governor Michael Parson, and after I read this letter, y'all, I'm gonna tell you why, after this letter right here, pretty much gonna tell you why that Michael Parson said, nope, I ain't finna, I ain't finna save him. Dear Governor Michael Parson, as leaders of Christian, Muslim, and Jewish communities, we humbly ask you to consider clemency for Khalifa Ibn Ray Daniels, known as otherwise Marcellus Williams. While we come from different faiths, we believe that all life is sacred and that our redemption and atonement are principles that should be promoted. We seek now to promote the sacred life of one of our own, a religious leader, and an integral part of the fabric of our community. God, Allah, looks upon us. He knows our faults. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our sins better than we know our own. From the smallest to the greatest, he knows the difficulties and harm Marcellus has been accused of and has brought upon others. While he knows it, he looks on Marcellus, made in his image and likeness, continues to love Marcellus despite his wrongs. We understand Marcellus has not always been an upstanding citizen. He has made mistakes and his mistakes have caused pain, but people are flawed and our God is merciful and never ceases to forgive us. Our request for mercy upon Marcellus is not avoiding consequences or or a penalty. Instead, it is about a lifetime of imprisonment. This grace is about dealing justice with the same kind of love God has for every person. With lifetime imprisonment, Marcellus will have a chance to continue his service to the religious community that he leads as an imam. The members of the religious community choose their leader and the Muslims incarcerated in Potisai, I hope I said that right, have chosen Marcellus to lead them in their faith journey. As an imam, Marcellus serves not only his flock, a group of men, many of whom have been abandoned by society and in desperate need of guidance and strength. But the institution as well by providing a vital network of support for the prisoners. This faith community also plays a significant role in easing a prisoner's transition back into the community upon their release. In that manner, Marcellus has bettered not only himself, but many others. With lifetime imprisonment, Marcellus will have a chance to continue his service to his community and the institution. We restore the faith we restored the family of Miss Felicia Gale. We must restore the family of Miss Felicia Gale, Marcellus, and the wider community. All three have agreed to let this matter be resolved with a lifetime of imprisonment. However, the family, de however, the family desire which the prosecuting, which the prosecution championed in his offer to Marcellus of a lifetime of prison, was vacated by legal maneuvers inconsistent with the family and the prosecution's wishes. We are advocating for the life without parole that Marcellus will remain in prison with the message that his life can remain open to redemption, mercy, and the healing power of God, and that he will continue to serve the Muslim community. Additionally, the family attains the closure. It has uh, requested the closure the, the prosecution has tried to give him via Marcellus' lifetime imprisonment. Sincerely, all of these people. Okay? A lot of religious people. A lot of a lot of people they co-signed this from Marcellus Williams. Okay, now okay, yes, Marcellus Williams hadn't been you know hadn't been the best person. Okay, um, he's done some stuff, and a lifetime imprisonment. You know he done done some other stuff too. Okay, see this murder wasn't it. He's he, he he done done some other stuff. He's done some other stuff. 
Um, and I guess you could go look it up to see what else he's done. But, you know, they just said, hey, keep him in prison forever. Keep him in prison forever. Okay, cool. The reason why clemency was not even going to be an option, okay, even if this man had been proven to just be, you know, I, I mean, just a saint, an angel. And, of course, Marcellus was no angel, okay? But if he was an angel, had never done a single crime, he still wasn't going to get clemency. Simply the fact because he was a Muslim. Now, you got to understand, Missouri, that's the most racist state in the USA, bar none. Capital, racism of the world. That's the KKK capital of the world, okay? And you better believe that they are not going to let a black man, and a Muslim, on top of that, do you know all the all the things that you know Louis Farrakhan said to these these white folks down there? They know, they know. Like um, seriously, he's a Muslim and he's black, and you're adopting a foreign religion that you know the same people that they don't even want in the United States. Uh, you he wasn't getting clemency, wasn't, wasn't gonna get it. And moreover, Missouri, I think that's the state that they last in pardons. <laughs> this ain't the first time that this done happened. This ain't the first time. Like, Marcellus ain't the only person to be an innocent man of a crime and die. No, 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 no. There's multiple people that's died in Missouri, okay, on something that they didn't even do. But I tell you this, though, okay, it was a single laptop. And even the prosecution said that they buffed this case. And it was also based on a racial bias. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I think it was race. I'm just saying that this, this is what the article said. The prosecution admitted that, hey, he also got convicted based on racial bias. But now what? They done took his life already now. He gone. Okay? It's a cautionary tale. Okay? A laptop. A laptop that maybe he paid probably $100 for. $100 cost this man his entire life a hundred let it sink in see people are saying well you know it's racist and white folks killed him white, white folks didn't kill Marcellus uh, Williams no oh it was people that looked like him they sold that man a hot laptop they sold him a hot laptop they knew it was hot and they knew that that laptop was connected to some kind of crime they knew it but they sold it to him anyway and well that man bought a very good, expensive $100 laptop, and he also bought his own death. <laughs>